Welcome. Uh, I wanted to show my support for the people who have been supporting me and the Inkscape work that I've been doing this year by asking them directly during the Thanksgiving uh, holiday um, about themselves and about their work in free software. I'm here with in intern James, Hello. Um, who has been able to work with me on the Inkscape pro project thanks to the generous support of uh, Lumide Adabo. Uh, I had actually hoped to do an interview with Illumide directly, uh, but because of a scheduling con conflict, we weren't able to um, align this in in interview. So instead, I'm going to be interviewing James, and we're going to be asking some basic questions about uh, his view on free software, about how uh, we should be supporting uh, people, and specifically to do with in in internships, and whether that's a good model for uh, supporting free software. Um, First of all, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, so, hi, I'm James. Uh, so, I am a recent CS grad from Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston. And um, so far, uh, I've been only working part-time, one, one day a week, essentially, on Inkscape. And uh, that has been my programming experience in a somewhat of a professional capacity, so to speak. Excellent. So, so you, you did computer science at Wentworth? Yes. Excellent. So how, how did you find yourself doing an internship with uh, Illumide? Uh, uh, they had a, so it, it was a requirement there to uh, do reach out and do a co-op. Oh, excellent. Co -op. So uh, I, I found his listing. He, he gave me an offer and off, off we went. <laughs> excellent. So I, I, I know this already, but you are a Linux user, right? Yes. How did you find yourself to uh, be, be become a Linux user? Yeah. So actually, it is a cool story how I, my, my gateway. Yeah. Uh, I took one course at the college called In Parallel Programming, and they had a supercomputer Ooh. So uh, that we got to remote it and do our assignments on. And I found out, uh, like, this wasn't told to me. I was just poking around in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I found out it was an Ubuntu machine. Oh, oh wow. wow. So a yeah. supercomputer Ubuntu machine. Yes. That's quite uh, So I'm like on. maybe maybe I should I should give this a go. And then I, I went off with Ubuntu and yep. eventually wound up to Gentoo. <laughs> so you are currently to Gentoo. Um I, I you've used other distros as well, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so you were well experienced by the time you came to me. Yeah. No. Excellent. Um yeah, so uh, James has been w working on bug fi fixing, and new pro programmers are generally, you know, it takes a while to get up to speed. Um, but uh, what I want to ask you mostly about is, what are your thoughts about uh, the way we do things in the free and open source world, and some of the challenges that we face from your perspective as a new pro programmer mm -hmm. coming in, uh, about how we could you know, make the free and open source world more sustainable, mm -hmm. how we can make it relate to users better, mm -hmm. right? how we can serve generally users' needs, because you're a user of free and open source, right? You're, yes. you're a Linux user, uh, and while you are a programmer, because mm -hmm. it means that you, you have the greatest access to be able to modify things yourself, most people generally don't modify their operating system every other day because it just gets tedious, so do you feel like, first first of all, do you feel like the free software world is serving your needs as a, as a user? Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah, excellent. Um, but I guess, well, one disclaimer, I'm still uh, a noob in the programming world, so I guess uh, I might have naive perspectives. <laughs> yeah, <this> is, <laughs> uh, we, 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 we all actually get into the Linux world, like from a technical perspective, we all get into the Linux world and do mm -hmm. uh, hard di distros, and then eventually we end up on easy di distros just because it's just easier. Yeah. Um, so do you, do you find yourself having to do a lot of things yourself, like take responsibility for your own technology? Um. Not really, aside from whatever documentation provided. Yep. Like wikis, man pages, whatever. Okay, so you, um, you, you, you follow instructions and that just yeah, to yeah, fix yeah. problems? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess whatever solutions the developers provide is, yep. I'd, I'd say, yeah, it suffices. Okay. But, um, so, and, and, and this suffices for your level of technical expertise? Yes. But if what? you were to say, install this for somebody who you knew who wasn't a technical user, mm -hmm. do you think they would be able to do? Uh, that, so yeah, that, that's the more meaty question. Uh, I, from my experience, I want to say yes. 
Okay. Because, um, like, the other day, I was I was showing my friend. My friend reached out to me about Linux. He was like, I hate Windows. I want something else. He said, hey. So, yeah, I showed him Linux Mint, and uh, he's... Yeah, my friend's not so much a technical user so far. He, no, no complaints. So far, yeah. When, when you when you installed it for him? Mm. Uh, no, no, no. I, just, I just showed. I just gave him a download link. Oh and, wow! Um, yeah, that, went, that yeah. does sound good. Yeah, so, like te- uh, technically, it's just as easy to use Linux Mint as it would be, say, for instance, to use macOS. Uh, yeah. That's, so. that, that's um, pretty pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I would say that it's like. Like, I don't know, like software that, that works, it's free and provided like as a charity, you say. Yeah. Uh, I'd say that is deserving of like, at least like accepting donations from users. I'd say that's a, that's not a bad thing, but maybe it's not sustainable from what I hear. I mean, it's a, it's a hard one to try and, uh, un- unpick. And so I'm, I'm interested to hear your perspective on like, what do you think we should do? Okay. <laughs> Sorry to tell you about that. Yeah, um, like, I do think that, like, having, like, stakeholders that demand, or, or yeah, demand request some, some features that they want that, that has good insight usually on, uh, what, the, what the people, the users, they, they, uh, like, they, the stakeholders have the users in mind. Right. Um, so that can be really valuable if you can have that sort of infrastructure to, to like have that sort of right, right, right. So, so uh, would you say that um, that as long as you have insight and you obviously have resources from someone, mm-hmm. that that insight can drive a lot of um, the development that's required in order to serve user interests. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, like if you know what the users want, you can definitely tailor uh, some some requirements to meet those meet those requests. Okay, that's excellent. So, uh, would you, do you think you'll get involved in free free, free software development in, in the future? Oh, totally. Yeah. So, from what the the nuggets that uh, you've you've given me, I guess <laughs> <laughs> a taste for it. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I, I like. I definitely want to get more involved because uh, I do. Uh, support costs. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you, do you think you would look into it as a sort of career, or do you think you would do it as a volunteer? Uh, I want to kind of get a mix of both. Yeah. Uh, like I don't know. I could definitely have a weekend project to work on or something. Of course. Um, and then as for a mainstay career, I could I could see myself doing it. Yeah, because it's. It, I mean, there's not a lot of jobs, but they there are definitely jobs that were you're exclusively developing for free and open source. Mm. Um, you know, would you would you work on desktop stuff, or would you think you would end up doing server and backend? Uh, I don't know. I would. I want to say I'm a more backend type of guy. Like uh, any UI stuff, I'm not. So I have you working on completely the wrong kind of. <laughs> It'll stretch you. It's no, good. no, no, it's okay. Like, I get it. Um, but, like, I, I'm still open. Because, uh, yeah, like, I have a, right now, I guess my worldview is not too big in, yeah. in the fast world, so I just want to yeah, yeah. see my horizon. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, they, they, like, what does free software community look like from the outside as you're coming into it? And, mm. You know, maybe you want a career, maybe you want to just help out. Uh, you know, are we providing all of the right avenues for new entrants, do you think? Um, and I don't know. It's hard because, uh, for, in terms of going to the public, it's like, uh, they only really see the billion dollar ads and whatnot True. that those big tech companies put out. And yeah. so, I don't know, as a FOSS, you can't really do that. Not, yeah, not really. Mm. So, like, it, it definitely slips on people's radar. Um, yeah. so I don't know. It's a lot on us to, like, push and spread the word yes so, yeah in fact uh, it, it, you know there's a lot of people who say that um, outreach is a critical component of free software that you know not just advertising but also like all the support help that people voluntarily give each other is like a key part of making sure this thing is, is more sustainable than it would be otherwise mm. um, but 
those are all of the questions that I have. Um, and thank you, everybody, for uh, watching this video. Um, I'm probably going to cut it up, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you.